These are called lightning talks for a reason. They are very much like an arts and sciences education because they will electrify you, they will shock you, and they will illuminate you. Unlike a College of Arts and Sciences education, they are also quick. Okay. <laughs> and we're so pleased that we have a roster of individuals who either are alumni of the College of Arts and Sciences or really wish they were alumni of the College of Arts and Sciences. And we're proud of every one of them. And our first speaker today is someone we affectionately know as Foxy. His name is Richard Fox. He was born in Worcester. And he says, Worcester is a place where people are provoked to poetry. He came to Webster, which he says is less a college and more of an artist colony when he was here. And what he doesn't say in his resume, even though there's a lot in his resume about the work he's done in poetry, the poetry organizations he's founded, uh, the places he's read and published his poetry, the poetry journal that he has published, he's also a highly successful businessman. And I don't know if he, if he omits that because he's embarrassed by it or because he just thinks it's not relevant. But I think that Foxy is living proof that you can be a successful businessman and also have a mind and a soul. So I'm pleased to introduce Webster College in verse, Richard Fox. I hope I hit the shock and electrify buttons, but we'll see. Um, I I began Webster College in the fall of 1970. I took two years off to find myself, which meant finding out that working is a whole lot less enjoyable than being in college. And I came back and graduated in 1976. Ten minutes is a short time, so I'm going to kind of jump right away into the poems. I'm going to read three poems, um, three, differing, three differing images of uh, Webster. Uh, the first I wrote for Sister Mary Mangan, who uh, was a teacher and an influence, and it was kind of a uh, revelation for this Jewish 17-year-old Jewish boy to come and meet a whole bunch of nuns for the first time <laughs> and, and find out you know, how enlightening and how elevating uh, they could be. So in some ways, this summarizes my Webster experience. It's called Instead. For this, I forsake Massachusetts for Missouri. For this, I trade land of the little big hills for land with the people of dugout canoes. For this, I transition from an all-boys prep school to an all-girls Catholic college just converted to co-ed colony. For this, I fly 1,200 miles for $35 with a student discount on Allegheny Airlines flight from Boston to Baltimore to Pittsburgh to Indianapolis to Columbus to St. Louis. <laughs> but the stewardess has let me carry on my guitar as long as I take requests. And I sit next to Rita Coolidge for a leg, and we both pretend I don't know who she is. <laughs> for this, I live in a dorm with a roommate who also takes comfort in clutter. For this, I endure the distraught look on the director of housing's face when she tours our floor. <laughs> For this, I sweat high stakes poker. Loser does the laundry. <laughs> For this, I jam back in the USSR, and when you dance, I can really love until 3 AM when I should cram coursework. For this, I go to the turret and coffee up to stay awake in class and speak nimbly. For this, I research and write a term paper on legislating lobbying, lobbying in four hours. For this, I chant Torah in Zadie's trope so the sisters can hear its melody and meter. For this, I coordinate a field trip to the state capitol, even though I sleep both ways on the bus. For this, I collect my corrected term paper covered with copious red remarks, most of which are complimentary. For this, I am summoned to your office to be serenely counseled that I am wasting my potential, my parents' money, and letting down my peers, who frankly are just as reckless at night. For this, I'd rather you scold me for hours. <laughs> 